Okay, so here we go. We are going to build a manual trainer today. And um, I've got like all the important things. First of all, I've got my cycling t-shirt, which is critical for making this. Um, so that's basically the most important things of building anything is make sure you got the right equipment. So we got that. So here's the parts that we're gonna need for a manual trainer. Let's go ahead and look at that. So we bought two pieces. Oh two pieces of two by sixes by eight feet long. Um, and we're gonna have to make a couple of cuts. So we go ahead, we're gonna, I've got a um, compound miter saw, so that should make that easy. We got this little piece here, that's gonna be for the front to make sure that we don't um, go over the top or over the back of the bike. We've got some screws here. We've got, this is a cord that we're gonna just tie to the front. So when you start to manual, you don't flip over the back. So that should go. The screw, those go together, those are married. We're gonna have babies. Um, then this is because I lost my electric drill. I don't know how you lose an electric drill, but it's lost. And then the most important thing actually is this. We start every project with a soda. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first step here in making the manual trainer is to measure the length of the bike. So you can see I left the front end hang over the board just a little bit. All you need to do is make sure that the bike is able to rest on the board. And so now I'm just marking where the back support is gonna go, so where the back wheel is gonna push against and make sure that I've got that about right. So we made a mark for that. And then the next step is that we need to know about how much support we want. And so this is again, just kind of making it up a little bit, eyeballing it, but it looked like we needed about 21 inches or so. And so that's uh, the length that we're gonna cut the back support is how far we, um, we thought that the supports would need to go. So go ahead and mark that and cut that. I'm figuring out how to use a square. It's got uh, three sides, it's very complicated. So now we're gonna take that to the chop saw and get that length. But one thing that's really pretty important is that this chop saw doesn't work if it's not plugged in, but fortunately, I do have an assistant who can run over and get that cord, plug it in, and we are back in business. That brings us to the most complicated part of the build, which is figuring out how long this line needs to be, the one where the arrow is pointing. We knew exactly how, uh, where we wanted it to meet at the back and at the base, but what does that line need to be? So, a square plus B square equals C square. You can figure that out, or you can just go online and find it. Or my personal method is just dry fit the boards, make a mark. It's not rocket science here, and we don't need to be perfect. What is important is that you get really precise 45 degree angles. As long as your both your angles are 45 degrees, then you're gonna be okay. If you're off an inch or so, not a big deal. If you're off five inches, that's probably a problem but just two really straight 45s and make sure both your supports are identical, then you should be okay. So just finishing up the uh, second cut on the first support. I'll take that over, match it up. Um, just copy the first one to make sure that they are as close to identical as possible. Make a line there. Cut that one so that they are both the same. And it really does help to have this uh, compound miter saw, um, but you can do this obviously with just a hand saw if you wanted to. I have to just measure a little bit more than I did. So once I got them together, they're um, pretty much a good fit and they're ready to go onto the trainer. Now that I have the main pieces cut, my uh, first uh, piece of assembly, I'm gonna put the back support. So this is what the wheel is going to um, push against, I guess, when you, when you try to manual. So no, some, I'm using just a right, uh, right square there to um, make sure that I get the piece straight. And what I learned pretty soon yeah, was that I needed to pre-drill the holes sure just the because this wood was splitting really easily. Um, but to get there. that first port part, you do want it, uh, you want a 90 degree angle there. That means that your support pieces, which are both cut at 45s, are gonna fit perfectly. So, and that first screw is, uh, Usually the toughest one to put in, it goes pretty quickly after that. More mad skills. Putting in the screw, missing it. Now we got it. So now that we got that first part, that support ready to go. Now, 
putting in the support, the side pieces here, and you can see I'm starting to pre-drill the holes at this point. I learned, um, if you can look on the left side of there, I split some of that wood, so I started pre-drilling all my holes, it made things go a lot more smoothly. Um, so the side pieces, you know, again, since I've got the 45 degrees cut pretty, pretty straight, then um, they match up fairly well here. It helps to have a second set of hands, one person holding the top while I'm screwing in the bottom, which you can't see that, but that's what's happening. There's the second side support going in. I think that will pretty much finish that one. You can really start to see it uh, take shape here. So we need to we need to block the the wheel the front side of the back wheel we've got to block it and we're deciding between what we want to use to block it um, so that I'm trying to use I'm trying not to use any extra wood uh, we used two two by sixes that were eight feet long if I was going to do it again maybe I'd get one that was ten feet just so I had a little extra but I think we're going to use our triangle pieces to block in the front wheel or block in the front side of the back wheel. So we'll give that a shot. Skill, baby. Skill. <laughs> Get that? So is that right there. See, I was gonna, I was gonna cut it, but I just thought instead I'd just put a nail right through it and split it. <laughs> Son of a gun. Alrighty then. Well. With the block for the back wheel in place, now I'm moving on to the support to keep the whole structure moving from side to side. And I'm just taking some of the extra wood that I had from the end of the board. I'm going to use those as kind of feet for the ends of the supports. I'm just cutting those off and then I'm going to attach those to the support piece. So I've got these that I'll add on one side, do the same thing on the other side and then flip this over, attach it, and that will be my support. So I've got some good construction footwear. So there's the finished product. Um, didn't feel like we needed a ton of, I've seen some of these that have a lot of extra support at the back. We didn't do that, but um, I like this design. I saw this on YouTube somewhere. I, I like the simplicity of just having two by sixes. It also only means you only have to buy a two by six, a couple two by sixes, not any two by fours. And then we really haven't used the front 
the front piece to help catch the wheel from, or keep it from going too far. That would be helpful now uh, though. It'd be kind of helpful, but you also just start learning how to drop off the back. So yeah. anyway, day one, we're pretty, I think I'm happy with it. Oh, also this, this little stopper for the back wheel. Um, I was nice. gonna do two of those side by side so it would be a little bit thicker, but I split that one, which I think is in the video. And so we're down to just the one stopper, but again, that's not really a, it doesn't really support anything, it just holds the wheel from um, moving forward. So not a big deal. Yeah, so there she is, a manual trainer. And then in uh, about three weeks, we'll be showing like how great we are at manually.